Hey everybody, I'm Paradox J77, and today I'm going to show you how I set up my audio capturing so that I can record games on my PC. Um, this is going to focus on PC games, Steam, and others. Um, I'll do another video on console games after this. Um, they're slightly different, um, but different enough to require a different video. And then I'll also do a video on editing and how I use Premiere Pro and some of the other tools I have to actually produce the videos. Okay, so there's a lot of ways that this can be done. This is just the way that I do it, okay? We're gonna go over audio first, and then we're gonna go over the video. So right now, let's talk about audio channels. So we're gonna have three different audio sources for most of our recordings. Um, some will only have two, but we have the system sound or the game sound. Uh, we have the microphone that you're gonna be using. I use my blue snowball here, but you're gonna have your own hopefully. Um, I would definitely recommend not using your <laughs> game chat headset one. They just don't come out as nice. Um, you're also going to have possibly Skype or some other uh, chat software so you can bring your friends in on it if you're using a multiplayer game. So the key thing here is to keep all of three of these so sources separate in your recording software so you can raise, lower, mute, distort, whatever you want to do separately so they're not all one uh, editable track you can do everything individually so in order to record with uh, a microphone and not pick up the other information so this the system sound in the Skype you're gonna wanna make sure you're using a headset so that you can feed the Skype sound and the system sounds so you can hear them into your headset without picking them up on your mic so in order to do this and keep them all separate tracks we're gonna have to use uh, software called virtual audio cables there are several versions of this stuff out there, um, but the ones I'm going to use, I'm going to walk you through in a moment here. Okay, so, so what I use is VB Audio Virtual Apps, and I use their virtual audio cables. I'll put the link in the description below, um, but we use the VB Audio Cable. You can download it here and install it. Um, I also recommend donating it's a pay what you want donation wear so it's very affordable um, so donate to them so you can get the cable A and cable B so then you'll have three virtual audio cables in this tutorial we'll be using two of them but definitely you'll, you'll want more than one I also while you're on this site recommend picking up the voice meter we'll be using that as well the voice meter is the mixer for the audio sources and it's what's gonna feed everything back into our headset so that we can hear it. Alright. So there are three pieces of software that we use in addition to the virtual audio cable. That is the voice meter that you just saw. And I'll bring it back up later. I use DX Tori and and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and I use Debut Professional, which is this webcam software you're seeing over here. So let's look first at getting our audio into our headset. So in order to do that, I use Voice Meter. Now Voice Meter is just a virtual mixer. It allows you to take two to three. I think uh, the, there's a banana version and there's a freer version, um, but I think they're both donationware. I, I'll have to double check on that for you. I'll list that in the comments below when I find out again. Um, but I like the banana version because it has three hardware inputs, two virtual inputs, but more importantly, it allows you to differentiate between hardware outputs. And we'll get to that and you'll see why that's important. Okay, um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that as per our setup diagram here, that we have system sound mapped to our virtual audio cable. So to do that, we're going to open up our playback devices and normally this is my my audio's HDMI output that goes to my monitor or television um, and that's usually the default audio playback device um, what we're going to do is we're going to make cable input our default playback device okay so uh, you can see if if this was our default we would want to move back down to here, set default device, set default communication device. 
So once that's set as the default communication device, then all of your game sound, all of your system sound is going to come into this audio cable so that you can capture it and pull it off separately. We're going to be using cable A to capture our Skype audio. So let's open up Skype, go to Tools, Options, Audio Settings. We're going to use our microphone straight into Skype. So I got my blue snowball set. So that's going to pump into Skype for our friends to hear. And uh, our speakers, normally this would be set to either your headphones or your um, your HDMI out, which goes to your, head, your uh, speakers. But in this case, we're going to put it so that it goes into cable A input. So now we've got system sound going into a virtual audio cable and the Skype sound going into a virtual audio cable A. We also have our blue snowball focused into Skype as well, feeding into Skype. Okay, so let's close that. Next, we need a way to get these back into my headphones, into our headphones here. So what we're going to do is set up voice meter to do this. So voice meter allows you to set up, actually these by default, don't have any settings in here. You can just see hardware input one, hardware input two, hardware input three. Um, it also comes with a set of virtual inputs that behave kind of like our virtual cables. I don't use these ones. I like the more distinct um, virtual cables here, uh, virtual audio cables, cable A, cable B, and cable. So we know that cable, the virtual cable output, um, we set up already to be our system sound. So I'm going to label that system. And 2 is set up to be, or I should, A is set up to be our Skype input. So let's label that as Skype, just for easy reference. Now, what I'm going to be using this software for is to feed both of them back into the earphones so that I can hear them during the game. So I'm going to set up my outputs then, my hardware outputs. Uh, I'm going to set audio hardware output one to my headphones, these guys. And I'm also gonna, as a convenience, set up the second one to come back out to my monitor, which is my HDMI output to my monitor. Now, by default, A1 and A2, um, I think are both on. I, while playing the game, definitely don't want it to be feeding back out into the air so that my, my mic will pick it up. So I'm gonna turn off the output to the speakers on my monitor. And I'm only going to leave the headset. The rest of these options can pretty much be ignored for this process. Um, if you find that you need to adjust either of these, you can do that. I find it's best to leave them alone and edit them in their source, which is in Skype or in your system output or system settings down here. Um, so you can modify them there and leave them alone right here because this is again just monitoring uh, so anything any changes you make to this are only going to be to your earphones and it may you know supersede and make you feel it may, it may make you not realize that you've put them up higher or lower uh, than you really have so i like to have the true volume into my earphones um, now i mentioned the banana version versus the regular version i'm going to close this version here and i'm going to open up the non-banana version. As you can see, it's a, lot, it's a lot more simple. It's only got two hardware and one uh, virtual input, and it has two instead of three hardware outputs. The key per the difference here, though, for me is, even though I'm only using the two outputs, or the two inputs and two outputs, I can't specify that this has A1 or A2 on. So it's in both of them at the same time right now. I can either turn A off or turn A on. I can't have it go to my headphones or the speakers. It's going to both or none. Um, while I'm recording, I definitely want it to go to just my, my headphones. And while I'm, when I'm done and I'm processing things again, I like to be able to come back in here and just toggle it, flip it, so that now I'm hearing it through my speakers while I'm editing, and I don't have to change any of my setup. So we'll put them back onto my earphones, and we're all set. So right now, if we've after we've configured this 
we've got most of this done, at least here. So we've got our system sound redirected into a virtual audio cable. We've got our Skype redirected into a virtual audio cable that we're calling audio cable A. Our microphone is going into Skype. And we've got virtual audio cable A and virtual audio cable, so our system sound and Skype, feeding back to us in our monitors, which are our earphones. So the next thing we need to do is hook them up to the capture tool. So for capturing, I use DxTory. DxTory is phenomenally good at capturing the audio in separate streams and capturing things at great frame rates. Um, I, I just simply love this tool. So and it's, it's like 30 bucks, I think, 35 bucks, something like that. Um, there are a lot more expensive tools that do a lot less uh, than this does. Um, so what I'm going to point you through, there's a lot of tutorials out there. Um, Jack Frags has got a great tutorial on, on how he uses it. And there's some a lot more in-depth things. I'm just going to show you the parts that I use. And then you can go back through uh, somebody else's video for the in-depth stuff. Um, so for one, you're going to want to ignore any of the apps that use DirectX that you're not recording through. So if you've got uh, Adobe After Effects or, or Logitech Webcam or anything like or OBS if you're not using it through here, um, you're going to want to ignore, uh, add those to your ignore settings. Um, I leave the visuals the way that they are. Second, you're going to want to set up your hard drive. So wherever you're going to save it to. So you're going to add your folder. You're going to pick your hard drive. Um, for instance, let's uh, I record into my game videos directory on my X drive. I have a DXTory folder. So that's there. And then I want to run the benchmark at least once so you can see how fast you're going to be writing to your drive. Now, if you're getting less than 150 megabits per second here, you're going to want to, or megabytes per second here, you're going to want to uh, get a different hard drive, something faster, um, or go up to flash. But you definitely want to make sure you got some good write speeds here because that's the key part of getting good fluid uh, recordings. Okay, so your uh, folder path is set. You got a hotkeys. My hotkey for start and stopping my movie capture is F8. So when I'm in my game, I press F8 to toggle whether I'm recording or not. I can press F11 for screenshots, but I very rarely do that. I usually just go back through the audio foot or the video footage that I recorded and grab stills out of my editing software. For your movie settings, uh, I again am taking. Jack Frag's suggestion here in using Matrox MPEG 2 iframe HD. And I'm using the following settings. You can take a look at that. Again, I'm just going off of what he suggested and it works for me. So I found out that if I go up to 300 or so, then it gets a little choppy. I bring it back down to 249, it's fine. Um, and I, I have it set for 60 frames per second. Although I record in 30 frames per second, just because I don't have any need, I think for thirty for anything more than thirty frames per second, um, you can have an entire religious discussion about whether or not you need to record in thirty or sixty. I've been doing thirty, and I think it's been just fine. You want to make sure you're at one hundred percent, so you're recording everything at the at the same size, and then the key part here is the audio. So when we're looking at the audio, this is. This is what makes DxTory a phenomenal piece of software here. So you can add up to eight individual audio streams into here that will be each be recorded into a separate track in the software. So I have, as my default settings, my Blue Snowball as my first audio source. I just leave these to whatever they defaulted to, and they seem to work just fine for me. Um, two is now going to be my cable output. So this is our system. So this is the virtual audio cable from our system, and that's going to put the system audio, the game audio, on a separate track. And then the third one, of course, if you if you have need for it in your game, if it's a single player game, you won't need this, um, but your Skype input. So that's our virtual cable A, which we've already assigned as the output for our Skype. So you're going to have your commentary, you're going to have the game audio, and then you're going to have your friend's talking through Skype all on three separate channels, which is great. Um, so go through and edit those tracks individually. Raise and lower levels, mute things, cut stuff out, rearrange 
text or rearrange audio if you need to. Um, but you have them all on three different tracks. So I don't think I do a whole lot here with the rest of these settings. Yeah, I, I don't do anything. You know, check, check for settings or settings or whatever. And of course, DX Audio or DX Tori allows you to have different settings for every different game you have. So, for instance, I have my settings for the forest, which most of the time the only thing that changes for me is whether or not I'm using the third audio stream. For instance, Far Cry Primal, I only have the two because it's a single player game, so I don't need the Skype chat. Um, however, Gang Beasts is the same way, and yet if I went into Ark Survival Involved, I play with other players, so I have the third channel in there. Okay, so that is how we get all three of our channels into our recording software, DX Story. Now, for video, once I have DX Story running and I start a game, I can just hit my hotkey and start recording, so the game video will go directly into there. Now it'll record, DX Story will record one AVI, if that's how you have it set up, like uh, like I do. I'm using file AVI. And so it'll record an AVI that will have three audio tracks attached to it. Um, you'll have to extract these audio tracks before you put them into your editor, most likely. And so I'll show you how to do that in the video on editing, which I'll record right after this. So the other part of the video though, is if you want a face cam, I recommend using um, the Logitech here. Uh, I think I have uh, this set up right down here. And I use the Debut Professional Software by an NCH Software. And um, the preview gets a little choppy because it's just a preview, but it records excellently. But the key part about this is that it records very well in the background, which I had very poor luck with OBS doing that. Uh, open broadcasting software. When I recorded with that, it would start losing frames and then just lock and freeze up. This doesn't do that for me. This records beautifully. Um, I'll go into my options here just so you can kind of see what I have set up. So I've got my Logitech HD Pro Webcam C920 set up. I recorded 800 by 600 for this, 30 frames per second. It doesn't have to be full HD or anything like that. It's going to be a small little corner of, of the game screen. So there's no reason for me to record it at high resolution. I turn off the audio. I'm going to be recording, as we talked about, all of the audio through DX Tori, including my commentary. So I don't want to record it into here as well. It's just something that I don't need done, so I don't do it. Um, so oh, I should have looked at hotkeys. So the only other real thing I have here is uh, the output, of course, specify folder. I record this on my C drive. I output DX Tori on my X drive and I re play the games off of my D drive. It's important that you have them all on separate drives just so they're not tying up the drive with um, IO so that they don't, then you'll get one of the sources at least will become choppy as it's waiting for the others to write. So I, I read and write to them each on their own drive. Um, you know, re re read the games off of one drive, write the webcam out to another the face cam and then write the third uh, everything else out to another drive um, but uh, I have my hotkey set up so I have F9 and F10 this doesn't have a toggle I can't set F9 up for both but this allows me then when I, once I start my game I press F8 and F9 at the same time I, so I press F8 and F9 it starts my recording of my DX story and it starts the webcam recording. And then when I'm done, I press F8 and F10, and that stops both of them as well. That produces, like it, like I showed you, it produces another file. So you are done, when you're done with this whole process and you're done recording your game, you've got two files, one produced from the DX Tori that has your video of the game and the three audio channels that you had. It also, you also have another AVI that is the debut output, which is your face cam. And so I'll show you next how to put them into your editing software. I use Premiere Pro, um, mainly because I think it's the most powerful of the ones out there. It's It was really easy to learn, I think. And, um, well, I'll get into that when I get into that video. Okay? Well, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, uh, 
things I didn't know about the software that you did you noticed or, or could offer me as tips or reasons why I shouldn't be using the software and reasons why I should be using something better, hardware or software, uh, leave me in the comments below and let me know. All right, thanks guys.